All right, here we go with the opening cinematic here. The Alliance making their way to make war on Dazaralor. The tensions between the factions reaching the penultimate. The raising of Derek into undeath. Jaina's story unfolding. Very interesting, that. The mission was a success. Our stealth agents are clear of the area. Thank you, Spymaster. Hi, Tinker. Are you ready? These cutscenes for this raid are pretty sick. As soon as we're in range. Now. Steady. Tough. He didn't get the lock. That's badass, though. Shattering a ballista on her fucking arcane fucking shield. It's pretty sick. Explosives that were planted on their ships. Full speed ahead. Be sick, dude. Alliance. Forward. So this is the Alliance entry here. We start on the docks down here. In Dazar Alor. And as we see from the adventure guide. Battle of Dazar'alor. We'll start with that. For ages untold, Dazar'alor has stood at the center of the great and powerful Zandalari Empire, the oldest of troll empires. Its guards have thwarted numerous attempts on King Rastakhan's life, and it has endured trials both ancient and new. But as war reaches the shores of Zuldazar, the Alliance embarks on a daring gambit to besiege the Golden Pyramid and sever the Zandalari's bonds to the Horde. It was interesting. So we're at war. Hell yeah, storm the gates. Tired of your old fit? Look no further than today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM sent me a few of their items and I'm not joking, I wear them more than anything else I own. You can see it on my stream all the time. <laughs> the shirts and joggers that I was sent are comfortable, stylish and fit me really well. I can't express how much nicer things like the joggers they sent are than the ones that I used to wear. <laughs> Into the AM has well-printed logos that actually last through machine washing, so they're not just going to be degrading and falling apart after the first few washes, and soft, comfortable fabrics for all of their apparel. There's tons of designs available for their popular graphic tees, including this Thor-themed shirt that I'm wearing. So you'll be sure to find something that fits your personality. Click on the link below to support the channel and save 10% on your order. Make sure to leave a comment letting me know which design is your favorite. Big thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Storm the gates! Please don't run ahead so that we can get the all the dialogue and stuff. I guess I could solo a lot of this, couldn't I? But this'll, this'll make it easier. So... So we're, we're fighting priests and all sorts of stuff. Unleash the beast. We're about to get gonkified. Yeah, we're fighting Rastari enforcers, prelates, priests, people who live in the city, but are also sworn defenders. Sometimes, you know, especially when you're besieging a city, Anduin Rin does say, you know, do not kill innocents. But you always gotta wonder, you know, do we fuck up and accidentally kill some innocents? Who's really innocent? Champions of the Light, Rawani and her troops are the first line of defense against the Alliance. Paladins, these guys. Paladins and priests. A troll paladin? Now I've seen it all. 
Protest all you want, but you appear to be outnumbered. The light of the Noah is all the strength I need. Face me. So light just in a different way. Empowering herself with various seals. Standing together, they empower and heal each other while fending off the incoming invaders. And yeah, in my opinion, the Zandalari have definitely been ordered. I mean, they live in a Titan construct. <laughs> they live in a Titan facility. And they have facility mechanisms all around them that seem to suggest that that has occurred. Interesting, that line. A perimeter. I don't want any surprises. We have little time before the Horde return to the city. Keep moving! Light Loa, yeah, like Razan, Loa of Kings. I would say, uh, um, uh, Vol'jin is also a Loa of Light now. I would say, uh, Loa of Kings, touched by the Hand of Valor. Definitely some light going on there. You definitely don't want to go to the other side. Well, it just depends on, I guess, what she sees the other side. The Horde fights a Dark Iron Dwarf Paladin as the first boss. But you fight the Champions of Light either way, if I'm not mistaken. They're just different ones, I think. Maybe that's wrong. We'll see that. We'll see it when we do Horde. Don't worry too much about the Horde perspective. We're, we're doing Alliance, so we're supposed to be blind right now. We're supposed to be blind to the truth. So as of right now, there's no spirits or anything like that flying around. Just Rastari defenders. As we make our way up to the Grand Bazaar. I think one of the reasons why the, the Titans wanted to focus on the trolls is because of their connections with things like Loa, their icons of worship, their connections with nature and beasts and stuff like that. I think that was something of particular interest to the Titans and something that they likely found that they would be able to leverage. I also think that if the Titans wanted to experiment on Loa, that, you know, getting control of, you know, the civilization which worships Loa would probably be a pretty good way to do that. Furious Merchant. See, now we're killing merchants. So, you know, the Alliance is here doing the noble thing and all that, but now we're killing merchants. So, now we're not feeling so good about it anymore. You know? This is where it gets like, okay, now, now... We're invading their, we're invading their city, you know, and... The perspective that the Horde has is very different than the Alliance. And you start to see on both sides, you're both doing bad things, you know? You're like, damn! We killed a long boy, that's five mil right there! So now we're gonna fight Grong. I think we fight Grong. Oh no, it's Jade Fire Masters. We fight Grong after he turns undead. So Jade Fire Masters, to the untrained eye. Sorry. Stumbling their way into the heart of the Troll Empire. I fear we can let them proceed no further. On my home world, I leveled countless lightbound foes. I have been eager to do the same to these rivals of the Horde. Then let us teach them a lesson, shall we? Spirit and fire are what these two use. Mara Grimfang and Anathos Firecaller may seem like a mismatched pair. The truth, however, is that their coordination is second to none. Their combined assault is powerful enough to level the most formidable foes. Now, I'm not gonna say it is, but, you know, I think of Elune and, and Sargeras here. Spirit and fire as well. Spirit of life, harmony, fire's light, creation, but also destruction. And the fact that they choose to put a Firecaller with a Spirit Wielder is probably not a coincidence. Especially when you look at elemental alignments of things like spirit and fire. And you look at beings like Sargeras, who seems to align pretty well with the positive and negative attributes of both spirit and fire. Just some things to think about. Oh, right, this fucking piece of shit. Oh, I went too early. That's okay, though. 
This is so obnoxious. God, I can't believe this is a fight, <laughs> dude. What the fucking fuck? So these are rings of peace that keep you from walking to certain areas. There's this big barrier, which is actually a flame and spirit barrier. Do you see this? They're actually melding fire and spirit uh, and chi, which is spirit, together into a single barrier. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, chi, chi is, is uh, spirit, yes. Nice job, Jade Fire Masters. What they call that. All right, now here at this point, there's been some Beyond shades God, risen. Champions, I sense a rising darkness. Pecoris, thanks for getting eight subs. Here we go. So Rastakhan's gonna call upon his new packed Bwansamdi, because Razan is gone. So Bwansamdi made a deal with Rastakhan. And he bound his bloodline, including Talanji, to this Loa. But Bonsamdi, you know, it's all about deals. So you you be looking to make a deal, huh? You want to save Zandala? I don't know why he's sideways. Rise, fallen one. Zandala, be ours forever. <laughs> he's not supposed to be sideways. Yeah, that's definitely a glitch. It seems the Banshee Queen isn't the only one with ghouls in her arsenal. Ah, so Bonsamdi no has really powerful necromantic powers. Ah. Restless Bones. And you guys saw all those wind serpents in the sky as well? Then we have this Blood Moon. Interesting. I wonder how the Blood Moon might connect to Elune, considering when Elune gets really mad, she apparently turns like a kind of a dark orange or red. That's what it says, at least in the eyes of the, or in the uh, Embrace story. But what you'll also notice is that Bonsamdi raised a bunch of fallen wind serpents. Do you guys notice that? It just makes me think about what are some of those ancient troll connections to Hakar? A Loa which we don't know the origin of, an ancient blood Loa that apparently cursed the Zandalari long, long, long ago, right? What is the, what maybe could be hidden in the, uh, the annals of Zandalarian history? And is it possible that they once perhaps more generally worshipped something like Hakar? Why are there so many of these uh, wind serpents present here in Zuldazar? And dead ones at that. Very just interesting, I guess, to think about. Now as we travel up through the Golden City, we encounter Grong. Turned our own weapon against us. He was a noble fellow who deserved better. Heroes, do what you have to, but please be merciful. Yikes. Yeah, very quickly, Grong was uh, killed in his, in his in his other non-undead form by the champions of the Horde, and then we get to fight the undead version. Akara Mata, <laughs> it ain't no passing craze. Part of Bonsamdi VA? Oh, yeah, no. I can like loosely do Bonsamdi's VA, but I don't think it's like great. Bonsamdi's voice actor is very talented. Most vo voice actors are. So look at him just doing like necromantic smashes and shit on the ground. Deathly eight. Now obviously we know of the connections between Muzela and Bonsamdi at this point, that Bonsamdi had essentially usurped the position of Muzela. We need these beasts knocked out of the air. Muzela being Where the original Loa of death. Of so for Bonsamdi's usurped position to potentially grant him some further necromantic powers, maybe tying him to Maldraxxus in a fashion. Our I feel like there's Clear something, maybe something there, same color as Maldraxxus magic, indeed. Yeah. They dropped the ball so badly with the other side, Muzela and Hakar. I agree. I agree. It was kind of a. It was pretty whiffed. Very strange. But look at all these wind serpents higher up on the pyramid. I might add. Also, Mechatork just blasted a huge fucking hole in the side of the pyramid, which I didn't even realize he was doing. Eternal enforcers brought back from the dead. It's interesting to think that Zandalar has, like, it's because of Bonsamdi and Rastakhan's pact, 
Zandalar has a standing army of undead. Very, very interesting that that would end up being the case. I mean, they do preserve their dead in sacred halls of the dead and stuff like that, so it's not crazy to think about, but to think that they could be so easily called upon is very interesting. Does Muzela was a mere mortal troll uh, before being this raw and prehistoric version of a troll? Like something that ascended to a god? Alright, now we're gonna jump down here into the core of Dazara lore. We've already scouted these halls and disarmed the Zandalari defenses. Our way in should be clear. Now let's take this area slow. There's lots of good stuff here. First of all, that kind of reminds me of like a monkey face or like a primate face. There may be some art on the wall or on the ground in here, so I just have to be careful. The side rooms also have lore. So let's let's do the side rooms. Group one go left, group two go right. And let's do the sides. Let's do the sides here. And see if there's anything on the sides. Let's read about this though. Opulence. Long ago, King Dazard had his golden treasury enchanted so that it would rise against anyone except its rightful owner. Very interesting. Many an unsuspecting thief has been slain by the very riches they coveted, serving as an important lesson to those who would steal from the throne. Do we have to do gems? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. So this is magically enchanted opulence. This is, this is like one of the greatest expressions of, uh, uh, What's the word that they use? Oh, we reset. So, we have to not pull them out of the room. You have to fight them in the room. Uh, not vanity. What's the word? When you collect a bunch of money? Not greed. The other one? Does Zerg Middlebrot? No, we're here for lore, not to just easily Avarice, thank you. Avarice, okay, here we go. Get in the rooms. Avarice. Consuming flame. And they have more people buried down here too. Sun motif on the ceiling there, I kinda fuck with that. Oh god, this thing's hauling ass. Oh God! Oh God, here we go! <laughs> now there's, yo! Fire's coming out of these, what the fuck? Here we got some gems, unleashed rage. Earthen roots, green, unleashed rage. Blue, interesting. Focused animus is purple. And brilliant sunlight is, of course, orange. Yeah! We have tablets and more buried dead. And... <laughs> That's okay, now we just, now we just middle. <laughs> Very Aztec inspired, of course. It's almost like liquid flowing in, it's like a slot machine. This opulence. And I'm assuming this is where, like, gold tributes and stuff go to. Like, tributes made, this is where they're actually probably all all going. Being hidden down here. And this thing actually has several of those gems on it. It's a wealth elemental. Yeah, and Gallywix would prefer that we don't destroy it. I think Gallywix is going to be real upset about this one. Liquid gold, here we go with some of these mechanics again. Very similar to some of the stuff we saw in Atal Dazar. Hoarded power, liquid gold, spirits of gold. Interesting how gold can be used to reanimate spirits. Hmm, I wonder if this gold has any connection to the blood that we saw. You know, making kind of a tangential kind of joking nod. There is a something, a thing such as called, such as blood money. <laughs> or blood diamonds. And they're often, uh, 
Not the most morally obtained. What happens if I stand in here? That's all right. Entering the heart of the Zara Lord. Boss Silver Bijou. Amethyst Parrot. Aja Kier. Onyx Stone. Aja Kier, huh? Keep going. I'll catch up. Zinja Alore Blue Diamond. Cheat of the Black Empire. Sterling True Silver Flatware. Silver Filigree Devil Sword Tooth. Azerothian Diamond Brooch. Very interesting gray items here. Never disregard the gray items. Sometimes the gray items are really fun. Fucking Deatherock. <laughs> Yo, I love Gallywix being Deatherock, dude. I love that. I love that theory. It's so painfully fucking plausible. Path of the Ancients, Akunda the Devout. So now we're getting to devout worshippers of the Loa. We're, we're, we're getting into the inner sanctum of Dazar lore, and we're gonna start to witness some things that maybe we didn't even know were here. But we are now very much encroaching upon sacred earth. This is not good. You saw the Hakari Bloodstone, right? Yeah, Hakari Blood Garnet. Look at that, the Hakari. Excuse me? Worshippers of Hakar, maybe even an ancient civilization or something, uh, you know, like the Gurubashi, the Hakari, the Zandalari, the Faraki. Call of Kimbul. So they're trying to Call the blessings of their Loa. And we will work further into this inner sanctum. Yorucha. Call of Gonk, the Raptor Loa. Kind of giving you a hint at what you're going to see. Some ancient tablets with who knows what writ upon them. Unable to be read, unfortunately, although there were tablets inside of King's Rest which were extremely similar. And Path of the Ancestors, we move up here into the Loa's Sanctum. Here we have water with these kind of stone frogs which are not animated. However, this guy, Jack Kwa, is the frog tender. I would like to remind everyone oh, it's good. that this does not appear to be normal water. It very well could be, but considering the kind of swirling, kind of dreamlike lily pads here and what appears to be potentially kind of enchanted water, um, this could be some type of connection to either the dream or it could be a mechanism through which the Titans were influencing the Zandalari with order. I mean, we, we have water. It's a very common means by which they spread their influence. Isn't Gonk a toad or a turtle, not a raptor? Nope. I believe Gonk is the raptor, Loa. So, I want you guys to notice some things. Here, as we go in here, we see Zandalari riding on or working with these wild beasts, potentially Loa. Fragwa is the frog, right. Gonk is the raptor. Did the frogs just turn into Jade? They may have, I might have missed it. I might have missed that. M maybe they did. In here, guys, I want you to I want you to notice something. This is as far as we got last time, and I I, I didn't even know this was in here. Before we start this boss, look at the floor in this room. This is Zandalari cosmology. This is a Zandalari star map. Just the same as the one from Chronicle. It's reality depicted on the floor. Reality in the center. Both moons and the sun, the Emerald Dream and the Shadowlands. It is, chat. It is. Don't, hmm. Don't, oh, really though, Pyro? No. Listen to me as I tell you this truth. It is. It is. It's the same map we see from the Legion. It's the same map we see in Suramar. It's the same map over and over and over. It is not a fucking coincidence. This is a star map. It's not a coincidence. What's on the border of the circle? 
Well, I think this represents the border of reality, and it also shows ancient Loa. From the lightning fucking, I think that's like the lightning Loa thing. That's the cat, that's Muzela or Bonsamdi, that's Kragwa. This is Palaka or whatever the fuck her name is. Their ancient Loa, Akunda, thank you. It's all, it's their primary Loa. And this big circle is reality. It's the big circle with the big thing in the middle. Interesting that they put that sigil in the middle. Ring, 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 you could even say. But what I have long tried to show you guys is that even civilizations in the game recognize that the Shadowlands in the Emerald Dream are pseudo-planetary bodies. Look at this. They're halfway in reality and halfway out. And this, this implies that they are physical places. You can go and potentially see what we know as the Shadowlands or the Emerald Dream as, an, as a planet, as a planetary body, as a single entity. And so what I'm saying is that these, these are realms, but they're also worlds. They're, they're more than just, they're more than just little, how do I put this? They're like bound into reality. And that's why in Karazhan, it's the same thing. Karazhan Library Map. I don't know if this is gonna... No, it's not really what, what I'm looking for. Karazhan Library. It's the same thing Medivh has depicted in the fucking planets that I tried to show you guys in the Karazhan lore tour. It is not a coincidence that the Legion, that the Elves, that the fucking... That the Titans, that the Zandalari. It is not a coincidence that they have these celestial bodies that represent on their maps the Emerald Dream and the Shadowlands. You have you have to see it. It is evidenced right in front of your eyes when you go through these places. You just have to look around because the details are everywhere, even in the middle of a random boss fight's floor. It's everywhere. But this could also be, once again, the orderly perspective, the titanic perspective, so to speak. Or maybe it's just correct. So, some things to think about. How many pillars are there around this room? Two, four, six. Then there are those, seven and eight, but there are six Loa pillars. And there are six pillars that surround the cosmology for World of Warcraft. I think it's just correct. It is. It literally is. But people like to treat very clean observation and comparison as though it's wild speculation. Because they can't fathom in their minds the possibility that what they perceive as the cosmos around them isn't correct. <laughs> you have to stop denying the truth, otherwise you're never gonna fucking see it. You have to see, you have to see what's on the ground in front of you. And there are things about it that even I don't say, because I don't want to say them, because I want you to see them. Are they all channeling different magics at the pillars? <laughs> yeah, mostly. It seems blood, well these two are, you have lightning over here, which is Akunda, then over here you have blood, which is that cat thing, a Kimball. The eyes are all different colors. You got like a whitish almost for Bonsamdi. You got blue for Akunda, green for uh, Paku. You got red for Gonk and orange for Kimbul. Maybe the gems meaning something. Again, water cascading down through this sanctum. Another little sun motif on the wall there. And a huge one, obviously, in the middle of the fucking floor. But it's interesting how the sun is depicted with, like, rays coming off of it, where you can clearly see it's a sun. It's also interesting because it's depicted as larger than both moons. Which I think is very interesting, because in the other maps, it's not. The sun is actually, from what I can tell anyway, typically uh, imaged as smaller. So here it's larger, which could mean something. And then you almost have these, like, rays coming off of the Shadowlands and the Dream as well. Almost like they themselves may emit some type of light, so to speak. However, both Elune, I mean, Elune is supposed to as well, so I'm curious why there's nothing here. 
but maybe just to make the very clear distinction between star or sun and and moons. But anyway, let's pull this let's pull this boss. I just think this is fun this is phenomenal because it's not the only place in the world where you find cosmology designed on a floor either. Um you actually f I believe I believe anyway that the uh, big work of art on the Lordaeron throne room floor is early human cosmology and a reflection of how the humans see the cosmic forces and how things are aligned in that regard. Interesting power of the Loa. Kind of flowing through that statue over there. Very kind of spirit, color, energy kind of looking. Lightning from Akunda. Quantum Harmonics, thanks for the sub. So there we go. Storm calls. What is that? Someone got a pet. Nice. Child of Paku. I don't know if I read their lore, by the way. Deep within Dazar lore lies a chamber built to honor six of Zandalar's greatest Loa. Not all of them, but their greatest, the ones most revered. Funny how Hyreek and Shadra are not in here. The vampire bat Loa and the spider Loa. Hmm. Hmm. Six then. What the fuck? Thank you. Yo, you didn't have to do that. Child of Paku. There's a story told to some children that all winged creatures were unable to fly until Paku provided enough wind to lift them off of the ground. Interesting. All right, uh, let's continue on. Thank you very much, Sixten, for the... You didn't have to do that, man. That was really nice of you. Look here. What am I looking at? <gasps> Are these defaced shrines? The two that are missing. The spider and the bat. The blood, the darkness, the bad ones. Interesting thought. Because ultimately, what's different? Ah. That's cool. Those Loa are dead to us. Wasn't this Muzala's sigil? I think it's like a generic, I think. The skeleton missing altars. Yeah, that's cool. Good observation. And that's that type of shit I appreciate. If you guys notice something like that, yo, point it out. Point it out, you know? I I'm cool with that. Also, we've got warriors riding on the back of raptors, so that kind of shows the Rastari and, and Gonk kind of relationship. Here we have what looks to be maybe a queen or, so or maybe even a merchant, someone of, of importance riding on top of a long boy, a brontosaur, also being led by... You know, two people. Looks like maybe a ruler of some sort up there. More sun motifs on the ceiling. Now this room is actually very, very similar to the room in which you fight um, King Dazar. And on the sides of this, very interesting art. Look here. Well, this I think was on the wall earlier. It was just kind of dark and hard to see. Another kind of like maybe it's kind of hard to see. There's one there, too. It's kind of a skull with a sun around it. Very Mayan, very Aztec, kind of... I wonder how many blood lower there are? It's a good question. Well, let's look at the walls in here. There's Paku again. There's that brontosaur again. There's the raptor. Interesting in this one, there's a... A big sun behind it. There's a moon on this one. That looks like a moon. Are they different? Sun, moon, moon, sun. Surely if they depict them differently on the floor, they would depict them differently in art, right? Moon, s moon, sun. Huh. I wonder if the Loa and their alignments suggest anything about celestial bodies? Could you use the Eye of Kilrog to get a better view? No, the Eye of Kilrog can't fly. King Rastakhan. What I don't get are the teeth. 
Yeah, the Brontosaurus has teeth, doesn't it? The, the way that the Zandalari are depicted in these... They look weird. Oh, maybe it's their tusks? They're so weird looking. Looks like it's smiling. They're pretty ancient. It's smiling. Yeah, they look like goldfish, dude. The snack that smiles back. Whoop, I just punched my fucking microphone on accident. What the fuck? See, I missed this the first time through. What the fuck? You guys see that shit? It was like sealed. I've never seen that before. Almost looked like Drusty. Black and blue. But up here... Walk of Kings. We have a very large room. The heart of the Empire. And... Just out the back of this place, you can see that Blood Moon. Commonly associated with Buon Samdi. But something that, in my opinion, has always been associated more with a car, of course. It's very strange that Buon Samdi has it. Here we go. Some ancient blocks. King Rastakhan of Zandalar, on behalf of the Alliance and in the name of King Anduin Rin, I hereby request your surrender. You, an exile without a homeland, you dare invade these sacred halls and demand that I turn my kingdom over to you. That's obviously Zandalari ridiculous. Zandalari built an empire that would endure for over 10,000 years while your barbaric ancestors scuffled in the dirt. We conquered this world. We brought it glory. You, you are nothing. Merely the latest in a long line of savages seeking to undermine our greatness. No, I will not surrender because no matter what happens here today, Zandala will stand long after your alliance has crumbled to dust. But if you are so eager to meet Bonsamdi, then step forward. The lower of death awaits. Zandala forever! <laughs> so be it. Heroes, you know what must be done. <laughs> Interesting dialogue! I love it. Also, these pillars in here give me some Titan vibes. There's not too many pillars, I don't think, that have those vertical lines running through them. It's very, uh, Olympian kind of pillar look. Almost kind of Roman pillar. And they're extremely prevalent in this room. Perhaps in others, and I just haven't been paying attention. But they remind me of, like, Ulduar. Greek columns, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the word I should use. Interesting, this entire room. Another sun motif on the floor. Moon right behind, all right. And then look, of course, right next to the king's seat of power, you've got special water. That definitely is not order water or anything like that, right? Definitely not. It's fucking titans. You do not face me alone in Vedas. You stand before the finest defenders of Sundara. Well, they're fucking dead. Seal of purification. My loyal subjects. Won Samdi. The alliance in Vedas have struck down our people. Aid me. What should be reason such a fuss Death's about presence. Old Buan Samdi ain't gonna let no outsiders dig your throat. Buan 
want Sandy. You are my such strength. Now you will thought will be mighty my daughter. He said Rostakan chose his fate when he sided with the whole. Oh shut the fuck up. We can savor our victory back in Boralis. It's time to get our people out of here. It's a fucking sick staff, Everyone, dude. Head to the ships. Look at that fucking thing. That's fucking awesome. Interesting, it's got those similar little eyeballs on it to what these have. Little little eyeball, little golden eyeball things on there. That's fucking weird. What even is this, by the way? Like just golden blocks? Thanks for joining True Strike. I like the, the almost sun kind of throne. Reminds me of some of the uh, imagery that we've seen of, um, well, the sun, but also of um, eclipses and stuff like that. Kind of the rays shining out. It actually reminds me a lot of um, Zoval's sigil, the first sigil. Actually reminds me a lot of it, actually. Um, all right, here we go. Walk of Kings. So that goes back up. Yeah, the Blood Moon's there just past the throne. Yep, comes in through the window. Yep. Also, interesting lily pads in here. These ones are like almost, uh, excuse me, like reddish. A little bit of a contrast to the green ones that we saw before. That probably means nothing. Day of Kings. Back out to the ships. We took out Rastakhan. Mission complete. Right? Let's go up here. Admiral Proudmore. Tandred Proudmore. Alright, this is... Oh, right. This is Tandred. Not Derek. Derek's undead. We stand strong together. I said Derek Proudmore when I first started this instance. Saying that he was the one piloting the ship, but no, no, no. I forgot at this point, Derek was raised into undeath, and I'm pretty sure he's like with Kalia Minithil or something. This is Tandrin. <laughs> Derek? No, this is Tandrin. What's the Horde version look like? Well, we're about to do the Horde fights. So you kind of get a little bit of perspective by doing just one side. But we're about to do- we're about to actually switch. We're ready to make way. We need to get the fleet to safety. You ready to get the fuck out of here? Fuck yeah. Get us the fuck out of here. We will set things right. Hell yeah. We just laid siege to a city. Killed their king. Hell yeah. Oh look, it's the Tide Mother, Zalatath. <laughs> I'm just gonna start fucking with people. I'm just gonna start saying everything is Zalatath. <laughs> okay. Anduin, King of Stormwind. What do you have to say? There can be no peace without action. Mechatork on the brink of death. What went wrong again? The attack on Zuldazar was a success, but the whore caught up to us as we retreated. Don't do that. Witness who survived the battle. Please don't do that. The Grand Admiral fought bravely, as did the High Tinker. But the Horde attacked with such rage, such fury. Champions, speak to the survivor. I want details on what happened out there. Best song in the game? Hey, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying. When there's people talking. I'll tell you what. Inside Robert, stay calm. Just tell us what you remember. I saw everything. I'll do my best to tell you what happened. It so, started when they saw their king fall. The Horde hoped to pin us between their pursuing champions and the forces holding the docks. But they didn't count on the High Tinker. He gave us help from the skies, while gnome forces aided us on the ground. Until Gallywix showed up. Hey look, I'm Sargeras. <laughs> <laughs> Burn! You're better than me. 
You think I'm better than me? Tinker boy. Let's go, Tinker boy. Huh? Why don't I have an escape pod? Inventions are still cut rate trash. It's one of the best lines in all of World of Warcraft. Slap on all the golden glitter you want. Your inventions are still cut rate trash, dude. Oh my god. What a fucking bar from Mechatork to fucking Gallywix. Plus, fuck Gallywix. I've calculated your odds of survival. They are not in your favor. Allow me to introduce a favorite gadget of mine. You sound like uh, Algalon. He calculated our odds of survival as well. He was wrong. He was wrong. Let's put that bored intellect Gallywitz brags about to the test. I know how fond you are of spears and battle axes. But surely you recognize superior technology when you see it? Get ready for a shocking twist! Take Let's cover! See how you handle this little gizmo! Ding, 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 ding. Gigavolt. Gigavolt charge. Now, can we do the mechanic? That is the question. Not looking I love this dialogue. Oh, here he comes. Good luck on Gmod. The High Tinker fought bravely, but in the end, wasn't enough. Thank the tides, he had one last trick up his sleeve to carry him to safety. What the? Okay. I want to know two things. First, how could you let that pipsqueak get away? And second, why, why don't I have an escape pod? <laughs> enough! That's one Alliance hero down. But I want your blade soaked in Proudmoor blood. Move! The gems all over his thing, by the way. Interesting. And second! Why don't I have an escape pod? How could you let that pipsqueak get away? The Seventh Legion fought bravely to get us out of there. Hold this ground, Seventh Legion. We need to get our ships away. Leaving so soon, Shaw? Oh, what a pity. I've got an arrow with your name carved into it. Oh, fuck. Go cross paths again, Flight Caller. I'll see you dead or in was, chains before this- It was a raptor riding a harvester. What the fuck was that? All right, here we go. <clears throat> Our troops were relentless, bloodthirsty, but our Kotiran forces weren't backing down. I need this blockade broken and these docks secured. You should have never challenged the might of Kotiran's horde scum. We are not here Some to talk. Kotiran Reaper style stuff. Focus <clears throat> on the ritual. We must ensure all our people make it out. And they're doing a big rich yeah. shield down here. Doesn't mean I can't enjoy myself. The tide sages of Kulteris have, of course, shown up. The, ritual those are attempting. the major allies of the Alliance in, in, in Battle for Azeroth. Where the Horde went for the Zandalari, of course, the Alliance went for the Kulteris. And they both have exceptional fleets. But the Kulteris have a little trick up their sleeve. They might not have Loa. But they have Tide Sages, and they have people that can command the waters. And that seemingly worship a Kraken-faced God of the Deep. Tide Sage is a cool-ass name. 
Kotiran's trick. Don't get attacked requiring a raid. And I like how you can see, like, the ruined ships and stuff. This, I'm gonna be honest, dude, this is, like, one of the best freaking... This is, like, one of the best freaking raids, like, visually. In my opinion. Laminaria is what we're gonna find out there. Stormwall Blockade. Brother Joseph and Sister Catherine are devout warshippers of the waves. These proud Kul Tirans would gladly risk their lives to ensure the safety of their compatriots. Their command over sea and storm is awesome to behold, as are the ancient and powerful rituals they practice. Pretty cool. So, um, half of us go left, half of us go right. <clears throat> They're each on a different ship. <clears throat> Their ritual, interestingly enough, it's very interesting. It's like water, lightning, maybe a little arcane, a little order. It's kind of... <coughs> kind of what it looks like in his spell. That looks like an Almond Thule spell. Binding the water. It's kind of like what Almond Thule casted at Argus. At least this that animation. Void purple. Well, that's the thing is Arcane is purple as well. You might think void, but Arcane is... Do you guys remember the Nightwell? Oh, look at that. Translocation. That's interesting. The Nightwell was all purple, dark purple, and it had a little bit of white in it, I guess a little bit too. It just makes you wonder, like, what's the connection between those? Look at these sirens that are like half wind serpent things, by the way. What the fucking fuckballs? What the fuck is that? What an interesting looking siren. What the fuck? Huh, I don't think I've ever looked at them before. Okay, now we go back. <clears throat> they pull you off the boat? Fuck that. Okay, now we fight Laminaria. Kelp wrapped fists. Laminaria. An ancient, seemingly ancient water elemental. Deep beneath the waves in which it has been called. Interesting, dude. There's got to be so much stuff hidden under the oceans of Azeroth, and we just have no idea. Help laced greaves. Oh, here's Princess Talanji. That's when the troll princess returned. Blood in her eyes. Princess Talanji, the Alliance be using their sea priest Mojo against us. No! Those butchers are getting away! So. Help! Mojo is just seemingly kind of magic. What has happened here? Voodoo is the dark magic. Stay away from the voodoo. The wounded need my aid, Captain. Take these horde champions and pursue the murderers. Now we're gonna chase Jaina down. Which is pretty awesome. It will be so, Princess. Heroes, come aboard! Don't be shy. No more fucking around. You be careful, man. Lord Admiral <clears throat> Proudmore was as gallant as they come. She offered the Horde every chance to turn back. Did she? <laughs> Did she? Lady Jaina Proudmore, as the Alliance fleet withdraws from Dazar Lore. Consider this your only warning. Turn your vessel back to port and look after your dead, or you will soon join them. I have heard of you, Jaina Proudmore. The little girl who betrayed her father and lost her brother to war. Failure is your family legacy. If you know so much about me, Captain, then you would have been wise to run while you still had the chance. You will pay for your crimes. All hands, attack! <clears throat> As the Alliance fleet withdraws from Dazar Lore, Lady Jaina Proudmore stays behind with a handful of Kul Tiran vessels to slow the Horde's pursuit. Storm clouds gather overhead as Jaina leads her pursuers deeper into the Great Sea, where she will attempt to turn the odds in her favor. 
Now I'm curious, I bet that dialogue is significantly different when you're actually playing Horde. Because the guy that's telling you about this story, he's still giving it from his perspective. Where of course he would see Jaina Proudmoore's very noble, you know, doing the right thing. So it's, it's interesting to see the different perspectives here. Good luck on Mount, everybody. Hopefully someone can snag it. Hopefully it's me. <laughs> but if anyone gets it, that'd be sick because it's a low drop rate. For the Alliance. Jane about to do her own culling of Stratholm. <laughs> Frozen Ballista. And it looked like the Horde might get the upper hand. The Lord Admiral turned the tables. <laughs> Froze us all. Interesting orb of ice that she then just teleports really away in. Running, Captain? Pretty crazy. This is pretty wild. Impossible. Frozen song. I lured you into open waters because out beware. Beware. <laughs> beware. Of me. <laughs> there we go. That's Jaina Proudmore Mythic, baby. <laughs> There we go. Impossible. Okay, stay together. Everyone stay together. I lured you into open water. I'm the star. Because out here, you have no hope of escape. Now she's gonna throw shit at us. And we have to make it to her. And she's like in the middle or something. Unexploded ordnance. I don't know what that does. It probably makes fire. There she is. I found her. She's over here. Oh, that. Oh, wait. She has images. That's right. I forgot that happened. So we can't run solo. You'll still get frozen. Time we this. And a lot of us are frozen. If we break these, then we can be okay. Very interesting glacial ray. Can I, I make my pet attack? The cold. Nice. Here we go. Your horde will be broken. She ice blocks. Immune to spells and attacks. Isn't that where we have to use an ordinance or something? Don't we have to use those to, like, break her ice block? I see. So if that ring will insta-freeze anyone who's in it. So that's interesting. That is what that's doing, right? I need to understand what that debuff is. Oh, that's not good. Oh, fuck. Oh, isn't this her, like, enrage or something? Come on! Nice. Icebound escape. It's, pretty, it's a pretty sick fight. I remember this fight was insane when it first came out. It's pretty insane. Good job. How it happened. Lady oh, it's her transition. The bravest hero ah. I've ever seen. Thank you, soldier. We will see that the Lord Admiral's wounds are healed. Champions, thank you for all you've done this day. We cannot reward you enough for your service. No doubt the Horde will seek reprisal. She for blocks losses. when you lust. We ah, must that's make right. Ready for what is to come. That's right. Sometimes we must fight. I'm ready to leave. And so Jaina is seen as a hero. Why is her ice ball teleport covered in ley lines? Because that's the nature of arcane magic. Very nice. Now they just pushed her. You can skip uh, the ad if you have the DPS. And back in the day, that was the strat if you didn't want to fight the ad. I've forgotten so much about it, dude. Wasn't there a wall that you had to break? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I think she pushes you towards the wall and then you have to break it as to not get frozen by it. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very, very much for joining. Um, Now we could try to like speed run 
You had to free Nathanos there? Oh, right. She, like, traps him in ice, doesn't she? And then you have to, like, break him out or something? There's a lot to it. And we could try to speedrun the Horde. And just get the Horde's perspective if you guys are interested in that. So here we are, coming in from the other side of Zandalar. Fighting Champion of the Light, which is, like someone said, it's going to be... Uh, Frida Iron Bellows. As Vanguard for the Alliance's assault on Dazara Lore, Frida Iron Bellows leads her troops with fervor and conviction. Her battle prowess and unwavering faith in the light make her a force to be reckoned with. So that's where we start. Dark Iron Dwarves. Retreat while you can, Lord. The Alliance holds this city. I need to unlock Dark Irons. I haven't unlocked them yet. I like how they're using fire elementals and stuff. Obviously very Dark Iron, very Dwarvish. See ya, Frida. <laughs> Smoked. What the fuck? Take that shot, Nice work, champions. What the fuck was that? That was weird. All right, now we wait for like infinite fucking RP. Because these guys have to take 10,000 years. So now we're coming back. We know, we understand that Zandalar is under attack. We see this, that doesn't change. DBM skipping the cutscene? Nope. Don't even have it installed. Maybe for you, DBM skips the cutscene? Uh, but yeah, for me, yeah. Now you'll fight Grong alive, indeed. This just takes a minute. <laughs> it's very random, but is there a chance that Magni leads the Earthen in the War Within? No, I don't think so. I think more likely, um... Myra's son is going to be... You know, Myra's son is the heir to all three of the... Th uh, two out of the three thrones, right? So Ironforge is basically uh, ruled by three different dwarven clans. And Myra's son is the heir to both of... to two of them. Everything but the wild hammers, I think. Um, if I'm not mistaken. So I think her son is most likely to be a pretty big pr proponent in the new leadership of the dwarves. Um, if it's not Myra's son, I'll be very surprised, especially after thematically what we saw with uh, Chandra's Feathermoon and with Tess Greymane, um, among other characters, Anduin Rin, kind of the passing of the torch, so to speak. So here we're going to confront this Alliance War Machine, the Indomitable. Azerite, of course. Hi, King Gloop. Yes, Gloop. What in the name of the Lord be that thing? Attention, Horde Bruce! Or we fight a live Grong, sorry. Before he turns undead. Yes, yes. To demonstrate our capabilities, we prepared a little, or shall I say, Surprise for you! Attention Horde Brutes, this primitive pyramid is now Alliance property. You guys see how the perspective is a little different? Myra's son was just a, a newborn boy uh, back in Cataclysm, if I'm not mistaken. And the perspective, you know, the way that the Alliance treats them, call them savages, primitive, that kind of stuff. Be letting them stop you now, heroes. Now we're seen as the heroes, of course, on this side by Rokan. Whereas the Alliance believe themselves the heroes. So here we'll fight Jade Fire Masters. Though they began training together only recently, Mansroy and Mestra have perfected their teamwork and now present a unified front with both fire and fists. They stand ready to strike down any who challenge the Alliance. Here, horde filth. 
You will answer for your crimes against Colterus. Lord Filth? In the twisting nether, I slew countless demons of the Legion. This motley crew of troll sympathizers poses little threat. Together, we troll will show sympathizers. You deals with its enemies. Yikes. She just called us troll sympathizers. Is the word she just used? That's, uh, yikes. Imagine sympathizing with this empire we know nothing about. Hmm, imagine. How dare you? Helm of Tempered Jade. So let's hear this perspective here. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Quiet on the set. Like hungry predators, the Alliance monsters closed in on their prey. The Heartless Alliance stormed the throne room. Our noble king defied them to the very end. King Rastakhan of Zandalar, I order you to submit. You will bow before your new master, King Anduin Rin, and you will deliver your daughter to us as a hostage. You Much different. An exile without a homeland. Much different dialogue right there from Gen Greymane. That was not the same. But from our perspective, that's how it ears. That's how it sounds. That's how it seems. This is why perspective is so fucking important. We conquered this world. We brought it glory. You? This is the same. Merely the latest in a long line of savages seeking to undermine our greatness. No! I will not surrender, because no matter what happens here today, Zandala will stand long after your alliance has crumbled to dust. But if you are so eager to meet Bonsamdi, then step forward. The lower of death awaits. Zandala, forever! So be it. Heroes of the Alliance, strike him down! No mercy for this savage! So let me clarify. For the Alliance side, he says King Rastakhan of Zandalar. On behalf of the Alliance and in the name of King Anduin Rin, I hereby request your surrender. From our perspective, he says King Rastakhan of Zandalar, I order you to submit. You will bow before your new master, King Anduin Rin, and you will deliver your daughter to us as a hostage. It's very, very different. But the reason why the perspective is different is because, again, from the perspective of this Otoye who's, who's saying it, like hungry predators, the Alliance monsters closed in on their prey. From Rastakhan's side, the Alliance are the savages. They're the ones invading this grand, golden, ancient city. And in the Alliance's perspective, they, the Zandalari are more so the uh, savages. You know, the ones not really worthy or whatever, you know, they're, they're kind of, the, the way that they talk about them, I feel like makes it pretty, pretty clear. The Alliance did hold Talanji as hostage pre-BFA, to be, to be honest. It changes nothing. Changes absolutely nothing. Again, if anything, that reinforces what I'm saying. That from the perspective, thank you very much. From the perspective of those involved, that's why it's important. You don't just get to blatantly disregard someone's perspective because you don't agree with it. That's how. That's the whole key of perspectives. You have a different perspective. Someone else has their perspective. Just because yours isn't theirs doesn't mean that yours is right. You understand? Trolls are cannibals. Do humans eat human flesh? Are you actually about to argue this dumbass point with me right now? I'm not acknowledging that. Let's fucking fight this boss. I'm trying to show you guys the difference in perspective. Let's not let's not go there. I'm teasing. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell. Very uh, little. Uh, never mind. Very little intellect in that remark. <laughs> That's not disregarding the perspective, just giving context why this Horde NPC might have thought what was said. Right, the context for why they see it 
it's not that it doesn't it's not that it doesn't matter it does matter and you're right it does give that that additional oh additional perspective like this one I don't think we got this cutscene when I did this on Alliance. Stay. Stay with me. Dalanji. My daughter. I am so sorry. Hush, Father. Shh. It's all right. Forgive. left over and the life given one song service of one song yes my queen what have you done to me oh he didn't tell you about our bargain <laughs> shame on him your majesty the alliance dogs are escaping. What are your orders? After them! When she turns around, there's no one there. The rest Interesting. You know, King Rasta Khan was a hero for his people. I would do anything to avenge him. So a much, much different perspective there.